Hey, hey everybody, it's Steph. Would I be learning PHP in 2016, 2017? Short answer is yes, because I think PHP is going to be one of the uh, server side coding languages, one of the server side programming languages that is going to uh, not only survive for many years, but actually do very well. And there's a lot of structural reasons for that. Not necessarily coding reasons, but structural reasons. So let me explain. So in terms of server-side coding languages out there today, you have, you have so many options. You have uh, JavaScript now, you have Java, you got PHP, you got Python, you got Ruby, and there are others, you know. Uh, C-sharp.net, you get into that, you can get into uh, Perl even, some people are still doing that, and there's probably others. So which, so will PHP do well in 2016, 17, and forward? Again, the short answer is yes, and the reason being is because PHP is in a unique position in that it's so ubiquitous. It is everywhere in terms of web development, whether it be simple little two-page dynamic websites, Dynamic websites are just websites connected to a server using coding. And it's an old 1990s term that. Um, so whether it be a simple web app or something very complex where you're using a Laravel framework or a, a Symfony framework to back it, uh, PHP is there. And um, it's just, it's, it's everywhere. And one of the main reasons is because the three most popular content management systems in the world are written in PHP. That's WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. So there's a heck of a lot of work working with small and medium-sized businesses and even some big businesses where they have their, um, uh, their information side of their sites are driven by WordPress. So, uh, and if you worked with at all WordPress, love it or hate it, it is a PHP app. So being able to read and understand PHP, to be able to do modifications, create custom plugins, work with plugins, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, with WordPress, there's an advantage to learning PHP. Same thing with Joomla and Drupal, they are all PHP-based apps. And between these three CMSs, you're probably powering 30% or more of the world's websites. Think about it, 30% or more. And because they're such convenient apps, especially WordPress, WordPress is by far and away the most dominant, uh, these WordPress is not going anywhere. So beyond that, PHP is actually much more approachable in many respects in terms of building web apps than uh, especially Java, Ruby Rails, Python, Django. Not necessarily I'm saying PHP is the best language. There's actually some really nice things about Python. It's actually a sim simple syntax, a cleaner syntax. Ruby as well, but again, be, to get somebody up and running developing with PHP is much easier. And it takes a lot less time than let's say Rails or and I would imagine Django, although I have not looked at Django in years, so my opinion about Django is it's extremely uh, it's shaky because I haven't looked at it. Of course, I could spend 10 minutes looking at it and I can get, I, I could get an idea regardless. So yes, PHP is extremely viable, there's plenty of work with PHP. Again, I'm not saying uh, PHP is the best language and everything else sucks. No, and I'm looking at it uh, as I look at all my technology choices, whether it be a database, whether it be a programming language, whether it be a code, edit code editor, whatever, whatever. I'm always looking at the business implications. And if I was a business owner, I know that I could get PHP guys more easily than I could get Ruby guys or Django guys, there's a lot more PHP jobs out there because of this huge amount of businesses who work up with WordPress and other PHP based apps. So it just kind of makes sense. Um, I can guarantee you if, especially you want to get into freelance work, PHP is the king of the server side coding. If on the other hand, you want to go work for big, huge corporations, you may want to get into Java, Java Spring. There might be more opportunity there for you. If you want to get into the startup world, you might see JavaScript server-side or Django server-side or Ruby server-side might be better for you. But as I said in my controversial video I released on a month ago, I wouldn't be learning Rails and Ruby now because I think that whole thing is fading and it's all going towards... It's going to be JavaScript. Uh, it's going to be PHP. 
some Django, although PHP is going to be much more prevalent, I think, as it is today, and Java, of course, for enterprise. So there you go. Yes, if you're looking at a server-side language, especially if you're looking at freelancing, PHP is my number one choice by far and away because of the business implications because when you, you know, one final thing, you know, you know turns you know, to placate some of the nerds out there. I'm not saying PHP is the best language ever. Each of these languages has their pros and their cons. And you can't look at a programming language or framework purely from the point, from a technological point of view. You have to consider business implications because at the end of these, at the end of the day, these languages, these frameworks, are there to facilitate business processes. That's it. So don't lose sight of that. So uh, keep that in mind, you know, and understand where I'm coming from. I uh, have written relatively few lines of PHP code compared to the amount of Java code I've written. I've written apps over the years. I've written apps in eight or nine languages. I've lost track now. And some of you've heard of Java, C Sharp, PHP, uh, just off the top of my head, uh, then VB, VB Script, JavaScript, and you know, six right there. And there's a few more uh, things you haven't heard of, uh, Lingo, which is some crazy, stupid language, and other things. So, you know, um, I am not a zealot for PHP. I just look at the market, you know, I look at the market. All right, have fun.